Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. How are you today? The the alignment um may 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 speaking won't be the best because I am kind of uh, I have a kind of cold, so I won't speak very probably. So I am I am doing my my own uh, purge process, uh, going to the depth. So that's that's how it is. <laughs> okay, this this is happening constantly. Uh, this this is the year where I got ill the most. Um, because um, I'm usually traveling constantly, going around all the time, and I have no time for getting ill to be myself st uh, still in a place. So, so basically, what I am doing with this huge process of going in and to purging my own self, my own self, and so on, is by staying is is getting ill because I'm cleaning myself constantly. I am standing still here. So so I'm purging constantly. So I accept it. It's, it's good. It's fine. I am just cleaning myself. So I guess the whole year would be like this. But again, I guess I need it. <laughs> just another thing to remind you that uh, usually when we do this kind of things is to we refer with the concept of perfection like we have to be perfect and the person that teaches or whatever has to have everything already done and no it's not like this we are here working ourselves together uh we are we are working with our inner aspects and we are all doing that all together okay so we should not we are not here to expect for perfection we are here we are not here to seek for enlightenment and perfection. We are here to make the process to understand ourselves, to know how to work with ourselves. So we are like this <laughs> right now. So I'm speaking about perfection. We are going to talk about the topic related to the throat chakra for today, which is conflict. And it's kind of related to the pursuit of perfection. We humans from nature we look for a uh, conflict it's something like very very normal for us we look for conflict everywhere like in every aspect of our realities we look for that and the reason is why is exactly the same of why we are related with the throat chakras the throat chakra is related to the the throat chakra is related with the um, uh, process of learning, education, to assimilate an information, to express an information. So conflict is one of those tools that we use in our life to learn. So that's why it's related with the throat. We use conflict to learn. So first of all, let's try to remember what conflict means. Conflict comes from the Latin word con, that means with or the conjunction of many things. And fliere, that means to hit, to knock. And um, when you hit or you knock something, it's from one direction. But when you have a conjunction of hitting process, <laughs> of knocking, you are suppressed, you are uh, under stress. Okay, stress means to be under a lot of pressure, hmm? to be pulled by a lot of uh, forces. So when you are um, knocked by many, okay, when you are knocked by many directions from many points, so you are under distress. Hmm? So that's what the conflict basically means, to be under the pressure of many things hitting, hitting me. So let's let's remember what we have uh, spoken yesterday. Uh, that a person a being something that is under pressure activates its potential. So we are like seeds under the pressure of the earth, 
and by the pressure of the earth, the seed explodes and go up looking for the sun growing. We have to understand that in nature, everything that we see that is beautiful, everything that for us is like wonderful, like a crystal, like a flower, um, like, yeah, all the beauty that we can see ourselves, uh, everything that we contemplate in nature, like the most beautiful thing, uh, it was all born because of the pressure. The pressure of the magma, the pressure of the tectonic plateaus, the uh, the pressure of the ground, of the rocks, the pressure the the pressure of the atmosphere, the pressure of the gases, all uh, that press basically is born because of the pressure, and of course everything that we have accomplished in our life, that we say, wow, as humanity, this is beautiful. What what humans had accomplished, it was because of the pressure. So basically, one of the things that, that happen in nature is that most of the uh, organic and inorganic beings, like crystals, like animals, we have all to solve conflicts. Conflicts are the pressure and the heating and knocking process uh, that we receive when we are trying to express ourselves. A seed has the conflict of the soil over, over it. Um, a crystal has the conflict to solve of the, the, the heat of the magma. Uh, animals have the conflict of winter, <coughs> so they have to survive in that winter. Uh, so basically, everything in nature is pressure. It's, it's a pressure that creates a conflict that we need to solve. So it's about to awake the potential that we have within to overcome that conflict this is why we use conflict because conflict is a tool for evolution is a tool that helps us to move forward to to evolve to develop the tools that we have within okay to to recognize um what we can do for ourselves that would be this is why humans mostly look for conflict because when you feel that you are trapped and you cannot move in something so the strength within you is try to look for that conflict so it can move forward and to open path open a way to keep going conflict basically is one of the greatest keys for the growth and the development so now we're going to see the two different types of conflict that we can have in our lives. The conflict through the unconscious and the conflict through the conscious. So we have to understand that um, unconscious would mean the movement of two different aspects, two different currents that nature has created in order to develop, which would be a positive and the negative currents. Okay, the whole universe is, is based in those two movements of energy. Okay, so everything is created because of that. So ev everyone is pushed because of these two currents. From the beginning, from the main point of view, the positive and the negative. Imagine that we have uh, the positive, sorry, the, the positive, which is the below and the negative above. Okay, here. So, when this energy and this one are here separated, so there is something in, in the universe that makes pressure and press these two energies until they touch, but they move in different aspects, hmm? in, different, in different realities, okay? So, when these two different energies touch, they are trying to find the balance again, one going up and the other one going down. So to create that, they start to make this spinning mo movement, create, creating the balance so the cold can go up and the heat can go down again. No, sorry, so, so the heat can go up and the 
code can go down, like try to balance the things. So when they start to move like this, they create this shape of the spiral that in spirituality we call the Kundalini energy. Okay, so the Kundalini starts to move this, these two patterns, okay, that were pressed one to each other. So we also have uh, to understand what conflict means. Uh, we also have the cold, uh, the cold air and the hot air, okay, in in the atmosphere. So when we have low pressure in the atmosphere, it means that the atmosphere is going down. So it press the cold and the and the hot currents, okay. So when they touch, they try to organize themselves again, and the way they do it is by spiral. So they create a tornado, they create a hurricane. Hmm? This movement is basically to put order into two different energies that are being suppressed one to each other. Hmm? Why we call it conflict? Because it's the heat of two different energies creating chaos around, but this chaos is to bring order. So when we have a tornado, a hurricane, we, we, we see the disaster it creates around, it creates a mess around, but it balanced the atmosphere so we can breathe, basically, okay? So what we believe is a, is a conflict, it's really the solution, so it could breathe, so we could breathe. And in the other way, when we have the Kundalini activated, uh, that would be um, the, the moment where we have this crisis in our life that everything changes and we don't know how, what to do because everything now it's very different from what we were used to. This means that conflict, conflicts are created when something from the outside is pressing constantly against us, putting together the two different energies. So the conflict is the feeling of how the energy is trying to organize itself again to find balance. Now we can understand that we usually think of conflict like something negative, but for nature, conflict is the, is the tool that we have to understand that we are trying to reorganize ourselves into a different way. Hmm? So now we can understand that the conflict was never the problem. What is really the problem is if these two currents are conscious or unconscious. So let's take this example. Let's go to the very beginning of humanity. Let's go to the first humans in the caves in Africa. Thousands of thousands and thousands and thousands of, year, of years ago. If the first hominids wouldn't have wouldn't have the conflict of the change of weather, if they wouldn't have experienced the draw, if they wouldn't have experienced the lack of food because of the draw, because of the change of weather, we still would be there in Africa living like the gorillas. So just when we try to speak about the conflicts, to understand the conflicts, we have to understand that if there wouldn't have been, if we wouldn't have had the conflict of the draw in Africa at that time, nobody would have thought ever to leave the place. Nobody would have understood how to create a tool, how to saw, uh, how to how to build, how to be sedentary, how to be nomads, how to create houses, to create law, to create culture. We wouldn't be here without conflicts. We wouldn't be here without conflicts. Uh, neither we, we, we would neither have um, diversity in plants. Um, it's impossible to have so many animals. It's nothing. It would have been always the same. So this is why we have to understand that nature uses conflict as an evolutionary tool. So how can I use the conflict in a conscious way? So it could be something that helps me to evolve instead of just 
taking me in this polarity constantly, once and again, repeating exactly the same? Well, the way is basically to find a third way. And the third way is born by the other two. This means that you take the polarity, positive and negative, to create a third solution, not one against. Okay? So you create a third solution. <laughs> and here's the easy example. To understand how this works, how this duality works, uh, how the unconscious works, let's take the example of the seed that is under the, the soil, the, the ground, the earth. So imagine that the seed that is below the earth says the conflict that I have in my life is the earth that is, that is putting its weight on me. Everyone that is up, the earth, is, is just um, putting all its pressure on my body and I cannot find the light. I cannot go out to find the light and this is because of the earth. So the seed is saying the the only guilty that the only guilty that uh, is is banning me from the light is earth because earth is not allowing me to go up to rise to grow as I should be. Huh? So uh, so the seed says um, to the other seeds we are oppressed by earth we have to get rid of the earth so we could go to the light, okay? Basically, it's like that. And, <clears throat> and you, you start to, to say like that, with, that the conflict that you have as a seed, the conflict you have is basically earth because that's polarized. It's, you believe you're a negative, the other one is the positive, or the other one is the negative and you're the positive. And you have the conflict and you have to ha to fight against the earth so you can open and see the light behind. And isn't that how humans think? It's basically duality. It's basically believing that there is someone that is oppressing us and that we are the oppressed. It's duality. So for the seeds, the conflict is the soil. And for the soil, the conflict is the seeds uh, occupying a space that they don't use. This is why we have in our realities when we say, those are the bad people, and of course, I am the good one. Okay, so I am the good people, I am the good one, so I am right. And all of them, we have to take them away because they are the oppressors, they are the ones that are taking us, controlling us, and. And, and, and you say, I, we are the good ones, we have the power to the people, we have to be the ones to take power and blah, 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 because they are the, the bad ones. And suddenly you will realize that by law of polarity in the universe, if you believe constantly that you are the positive, so you will need constantly a negative to balance that. So every time that you say, I am right and the other one is wrong, what you are just doing is to creating constantly the opposite <clears throat> because you need it in order to be yourself the positive. So you could recognize yourself as positive, you will need constantly a negative. You understand what I mean? So this will be constant, this is polarity. You create constantly this, this system. And this is something that, um, that <clears throat> that I hear from people sometimes that uh, we have to get out from the system of duality. But the way in which people say this is like if the system of duality is created by someone in the outside, you know, it's like they are creating the duality and we are the ones that want be dual. And by just saying that you are being the system of duality because you are believing that it's someone that is creating it against you. So you are duality. So what would be the third option? Does someone knows what is the third option of the seed? The third option of the seed? 
<laughs> it's very easy. It's very easy. The answer is very easy. <laughs> so the third option would be very easy. The third option of the seed is to create roots. That's it. It's very simple. Roots. The roots of the seed expand in the ground and it grabs the soil, the earth, to take, to be stabilized, to have power, okay? And uses the nutrients of the soil to grow up. So the same system that oppress the seed is used by the seed as a third option to go up, okay? So the seed is basically using the oppression to be stronger. Imagine a seed being against the earth. It's, it's absurd. It's absurd. It doesn't work. So the plants understood a third option. The third option is to create roots. For sure, you have heard about the concept of humans being star seeds or we being seeds, light seeds. And but we have this problem being these seeds that usually humans that we believe we are seeds, we want to fly, but never create roots because we don't want to create roots in the creation of our own selves. We created the system. So we have to go down in order to have flowers and to find alignment. Basically, this is why we have to go down to face our conflicts, the darkness, to find the power that we have here in the ground. And when you go down there, the conflict is the one teaching you how to find a third option. The third option is the one that helps you to evolve. And the conflict is the one telling you, you need a third option. It's like mom and dad having a kid. If mom and dad doesn't have a kid, there is no evolution. Imagine mom and dad never having a kid and living eternally, both of them, just them. Won't be anyone, simply like that. Basically, this is why I spoke about the United States yesterday, because it's, uh, they, they are having this election and um, we will talk about what democracy is. There's no, no country in the world right now that has democracy. Democracy is a totally different system and there's no country that applies democracy right now in the world. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there, uh, democracy was only um, applied uh, during a short period of time in Greece, a long time ago, and nobody used it again. Nobody. There is no country with democracy right now. But the States is probably probably one of the less democratic countries in the world with China, Russia, and other countries like North Korea and some other countries, of course. And basically how the system, how the system works, um, like this. Ta, 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 ta. One or the other. It's like voting in between the seat or the, or the soil. What would you vote? The, the, the soil is saying, no, the problem is the seed. The seed is saying, no, the problem is the soil. And the soil <coughs> says the best is the soil and the seed is the best is the seed. But there's no plant growing there. Nothing. They're just pam, 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 pam. So that's what I wanted to say. We have to find a third option. This is why in our reality, we have to think about a third option. We have to think about a different option to work with. Because imagine, imagine if tomorrow I say, okay, I will run for president. Imagine that. And you all are able to vote for me. And I will screw it up anyway, because it's the system that doesn't work. It's not about a person. It's not about having a president or a better president in which we say, oh, he will solve it. No, that's, that's precisely the problem. We have to look for a third option, a different one, for each third thing to exist. We need the energy 
of soil and the seed. And this is because the only way you can create a flower or a fruit, something different, something new, is if the soil and the seed work together. So this is how we can we have to understand that in our own lives and in the whole society and the world, conflicts are just there to show us that we have to look for the third option in order to evolve. Let's go to the information for today. The vibration for today is Nye. The statement for today is I am the extension of the creator voice. The code for today is attraction. This universal law implies that knowing my ability as co-creator, I can retune my vibration so that what I want finds me. For it to find the same tuning as magnet. With the law of polarity, correspondence and vibration, I can attract to myself everything I want and everything I don't want. But nothing will remain, for the key of vibration is constant change. So this is why today we express the desire to use the conflict as a tool for our own evolution. <laughs> I have a conflict. Let's go to it. So let's sit comfortable. Just another option, another thing to tell you. Um, because of all these things that we have been uh, talking these days, uh, yesterday about this of uh, politicians and politics and and all these things. And one of the of the things that that um, that I saw is that a lot of people saying when when is going to be the system how, uh, um, how when how can we uh, how can we apply these tools and those things in the system uh, because of course everyone wants to change now everyone wants to change in this moment so uh, a few people would would say what is the use of doing all these spiritual things every day we have to act we have to do the things we have to change the world and blah 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 and the, the the thing is that um remember the law of correspondence the law of correspondence says that everything that is outside is a projection from the inside so if you don't work with yourself inside it doesn't matter if the system that we will do in the future will be the best one we will do a mess because if we are a mess inside we are not going to be able to create a coherent system we are asking for coherent politicians, but in order for a, a coherent politician to exist, we have to become coherent citizens, okay? So take all the teachings, all the things that we are trying to do now as a practice to be, to be a coherent citizen for the future, okay? Uh, if you Change within is the only way you can change the outside. So this is the preparation to become a responsible and aware citizen for the future. Okay? Don't take it as spiritual path. Take it as your preparation to be a citizen. <coughs> we begin by moving our shoulders in circles very softly. Until I relax and let all the weight of my body fall down and try to focus only in your breathing. I breathe, I become aware of the light around me and how this light penetrates in my skin, going in through my muscles and organs.
I perceive this light inside and outside of myself. Until I perceive myself completely as light, irradiating towards every direction. Self descending to my body. I go through my crown, through eye. Throat, heart, plexus, sacrum, root, knees, and ankles. I am the light of the I am. Descending to the depth, to the pressure of matter. Deep breath and descend through the feet to the ground, going through all the layers of the soil, roots, stones, and rocks, the crust, and heading faster to the magma towards the darkness of the core of the planet. expansion of the creator voice. I am the expansion of the creator voice. I am the expansion of the creator voice.
in the pressure of earth I recognize, I desire to use my conflicts as a tool for my evolution. What are your conflicts? Give your conflicts to me so I can show you how to use them. Only the creators from darkness know how to use the conflict. From the shadows, I wait here for your offers so I can give it to you by dreams as a gift. Expanding in nuestro territorio. And here comes the time where you will have to trust in the shadow ones. For your roots expand in our territories. We are not your conflict. We have only become that for you. Because you think that we are your enemies. Change yourself. And we will also change for you. For you are me, and I am you. In the dreams and nightmares, you will find me. But this time, don't run away. Turn back to me and watch straight into my eyes. For this is the time to work the land together. And there you will acknowledge that the only conflict, the only limit in the universe is only you. Bienvenido a tu propia sombra. Welcome to your own shadows.
Let's take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and begin to expand the light of your subconscious towards the conscious by moving softly and caressing your body. I begin to stretch, to yawn and open your eyes. One of the things that this being was trying to say to us is that the only ones that create the conflicts and our own limitations is ourselves. So what, what he said was that <coughs> before we go to sleep as an, as an offer, we give our conflict. Like, what is our conflict? Um, Think about what is your biggest conflict in your life. And before you go to sleep, think about it. So in the subconscious, when you go to sleep in the dream, um, he will try to give to you uh, as a gift, the solution for that conflict. And one of the things that he said is that the only reason that we have to work together and the only reason why they are kind of the enemies is because we think the darkness is the enemy. And if we just change our perception of them, the polarity disappears and they're not anymore our enemies. So, um, drink a little bit of water and Think about this conflict when you go to sleep and rest. See you tomorrow for the heart at the same time. Bye.